Hey everybody, I'm Tim Cooper from National Parks at Night. And today I want to tell you a little bit about Adobe Lightroom's latest release. There's a couple new features in there that are pretty cool, um, especially for night photography, although they're great for regular photography as well, to be certain. Um, but before we do that, why don't you take a moment to subscribe below so you get to be one of the first to check out our new videos when they come out. So let's get right into this here. Really the biggest changes that Adobe has made is they have moved a couple of things. Um, and let me show you where they are. First one is our profile. The profile Adobe standard um, has got many different choices in here. You can choose several. That profile used to be located down under camera calibration in here. And it's not any longer, which is pretty cool. They've moved it up to the basic panel. And so when you're in the basic panel, we have our profile right away. Now this is great because this is where I always used to start anyway. So I've heard a lot of people say, oh, it's a brand new workflow in Lightroom and it's really not a brand new workflow at all. It's the same workflow many of us have been using for years, which is starting down with the profile, which again used to be down here and then coming up and working through your image. Okay, so that was one thing they moved. The other thing they moved um, was the dehaze slider and the dehaze slider used to be down here under effects um, but it really does belong here in uh, the presence panel so that's a great move as well so the, a lot of us are very happy about this latest release okay so what do both of these things do for us well the dehaze slider tends to add contrast and a little bit of saturation into lower contrast areas so we can see up in here you know the contrast is kind of low or the sky is kind of low in contrast by comparison to the sky to the mountains that's a high contrast area right there so um, what the dehaze slider does is it tends to add more contrast and you can see as I increase that you are getting a ton more contrast and saturation up in the sky now of course that's really heavy-handed um, so what I like to do is just add little bits of dehaze maybe that's enough right there maybe a touch more mm, that might be okay but the thing that we have to be concerned about when we add too much dehaze is that on some images you get oversaturation so here when we increase the dehaze just a little bit I'll just click up here to about 40 you can see that blue has really gotten saturated and some people don't really like it that much. Uh, some people like their skies a little bit more desaturated, a little bit closer to gray. And that's, a, I, I think, a very subjective thing. And you could do what you want there. But I will often follow up uh, an increase in my dehaze with a slight decrease in the blue saturation. So I'm going to go to my saturation, click on my direct uh, select button and then I'm gonna click in the blue and then drag down and you can see as I drag down it gets less saturated as I drag up it gets more saturated and I would say maybe somewhere let's try that yeah that's not so bad so we ended up at about minus 29 on the blue um, and if you go back you can see where we were I'm gonna go over to my history here we'll go back to the where we started that's where we started then we added some dehaze it became more dehazed and then we took a little saturation away so that dehaze is really helping us to bring out uh, the contrast between the stars and the blue sky below um, you can really see it in this example here when I go up to my basic panel up here and click on that button I'm going to go to my dehaze and crank it up quite a little bit here and you can see if I really crank it it gets overly saturated and quite garish um, I'll double click on the dehaze to uh, reset that slider and let's again just increase it uh, moderately to somewhere in there now that looks pretty good to me but in my opinion the sky is too too blue and saturated now I could move my whole entire saturation slider down but that would make everything get less saturated and I'm not interested in that so that's why I'm going to go to the HSL panel go to saturation click on the direct select button and go and find that blue area click drag down a little bit and desaturate that sky somewhat if you don't like it go a little bit more the beautiful thing about this is that 
uh, when you're using this direct select button it'll move exactly the sliders that need to move so maybe that was blue and a little bit of purple or blue and a little bit of aqua um, just depends on the on the scene but in that way you don't have to choose your slider over here you just click drag down and then unclick um, and that will move this saturation slider or hue or set or luminance whichever one you happen to be in so the dehaze is an awesome button or rather it's an awesome slider uh, increases local contrast in low contrast areas but just be aware of the oversaturation that often comes with it now the other thing that uh, the other big deal that Adobe changed here was their profile again that used to be below here in calibration they moved it up to the top whenever I would start any of my images in Lightroom since the beginning we, since we had profiles I would always start by going to the profile first choosing the profile that I liked then down into the basic panel to start working um, and tweaking our image basically what's happening is the profile is like choosing a film so for example uh, when we used to shoot uh, portraits we would choose Fuji or, or I'm sorry uh, when we shoot portraits we'd choose like Astia from Fuji or we would choose uh, NPS uh, uh, from from Kodak if we wanted to do landscape photography we would choose Fuji Velvet a very high in contrast very high in saturation where the um, uh, the portrait films were lower saturation and lower contrast so we chose the film for the job that we wanted well now with digital cameras we only have one sensor and it captures the same you know it captures data in the same way no matter you're uh, photographing a portrait or whether you're photographing a landscape so what uh, the camera man man manufacturers did is they started creating things called uh, picture styles that was uh, Canon that created that Nikon created a uh, picture control uh, Fuji cameras have film simulation and those are all made to get your uh, your file looking a little different so if I wanted to shoot landscape and I put my picture control on Adobe landscape or on a, a camera landscape it would get more contrasty it would get more saturated right um, same thing with um, uh, let's say I wanted to shoot a portrait I could go into the back of my camera and go into the menu and go into picture controls on an icon and say camera portrait and my portraits would look nicer they'd be lower in saturation the skin tone would be um, a little more flattering uh, and they would have a lot less contrast so the long and short of that is is that when we shoot in raw those picture styles or picture controls or film simulation get lost when they come into Adobe Lightroom Adobe Lightroom is not able to get into the camera to or I'm sorry get into the file to uh, extract that um, so basically what we have with our profiles and you can see those right here is we have Adobe's interpretation of what it thinks it should be so Adobe standard is always what our images used to come in at and that was just again Adobe's interpretation oftentimes what I would do is I might change it to something else like Adobe landscape and you could see how much more crisp and more contrasty that is now right uh, uh, take a look at this image this is in Adobe standard watch what happens when we change it to Adobe landscape becomes much richer let's try that again becomes much richer and much more saturated pretty cool all right um, I think it does a good job here as well you could go to Adobe standard where it starts and choose Adobe landscape now what everybody's really excited about and talking about is Adobe's new color which is kind of like standard but it's just a little bit more uh, contrasty so let's go to Adobe standard this is what it again our images used to look like coming in naked without any changes and then we have the newest Adobe color which just makes it a touch more colorful but as you can see it's not quite as strong as say Adobe landscape that's even a little bit more uh, high color or high, or high color saturation so so that's kind of cool but we don't always want these higher color or higher uh, saturated profiles associated with our images because sometimes and a lot of times with night photography you've got very contrasty scenes and so in this scene for example if I if this started out as Adobe color it would look like that 
if it started off as Adobe Landscape, it's still pretty dark in here, right? Let's try Adobe Standard. Better. Okay, so here in this image, what I'd be looking for is opening up the shadows because it's kind of a dark image to try to get detail on that moon, right? Well, not only do we have these profiles up here, but if you go to browse, you get a whole bunch of new profiles down in here. Now let's see what we're looking at here. What we've got is we've got these new ones that Adobe has just put in here. So they've got uh, modern, vintage, black and white artistic. Then they have camera matching, which is the ones that we used to use um, in the old camera profile system. So the neat thing about these is that you can simply just hover over them to give you an idea of what the image is going to look like. So that's what portrait looks like. This is what landscape looks like. Pretty horrible, right? But what we also have is neutral. Okay, I'm going to click on that neutral. This is the camera matching neutral. I want to open up these shadows. So let's look at that versus, say, Adobe Neutral. Oh, Adobe Neutral, in this case, even opens it up even a little more. So I'm going to click on that one. And now when I go back up here and close this out, you'll see that I'm actually using Adobe Neutral. And in my opinion, that gives me a much better, uh, a much better look to the image than, say, Adobe Landscape, which blocks everything up and makes it look dark. So I can go in here into Adobe Neutral and still bring down my blacks a little bit and open up my shadows and I'm going to have a better contrast to my image just by doing that. And I'm going to just double click in here and use my down arrow to reduce those blacks a little bit and then take my shadows up even a little bit more and next thing you know we're going to be able to pull some detail out of those shadows. Uh, we might even lift our exposure up um, a couple of points just to brighten her up. Yeah, Maybe somewhere in there and uh, bring down our highlights, which it looks like I've already done to bring some back into that moon. So the profiles, uh, now that they're moved up to the top, are much more accessible. And I'm, I'm really hoping that people use them more often, because as I said, it's something a lot of us have always done is begun with that. And just remember, choosing a profile is kind of like just getting the image moving in the right direction the overall feel of the image and then you're going to come down here and start tweaking. So we've got the addition of the dehaze slider down here and we have the addition of the new profile area up there rather than in, down in calibration and those are two really pretty big deals um, as far as the way we're going to uh, uh, begin from A to B to C as we're working through our images. So that's it for today, folks. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. Um, and remember, we always uh, welcome constructive feedback. So if you feel so inclined, uh, drop us a note down in the comments section below. We're, we're always happy to hear from y'all. Um, you also might consider uh, signing up for our weekly blog posts. Uh, they're really pretty awesome. The five of us put them together. Uh, we put a lot of time into them. Um, and they're really super educational. So just go to nationalparksatnight.com. Uh, forward slash blog um, and check them out. I, uh, I think you'll, you'll enjoy them quite a bit. Um, lastly, if you're really into this, um, check out our workshops. We've got a lot of awesome workshops um, all over the country and the world um, dealing just with night photography. Um, and it, it's a great escape and it's, it's a fantastic way to learn um, about night photography. Um, so just uh, click the banner up here. Um, that'll take, take you to nationalparksatnight.com. You can check out all our offerings, our blogs, our, um, our workshops, and, uh, and everything else you might need to know. So once again, thanks a lot for uh, watching, y'all. I'm Tim Cooper, and, um, and, and have a good one. We'll see you later.